Ooh, it's hot. But I got something even hotter, and that is T-Mux. I tell you what, this has changed my life. And, uh, yeah, let's not talk any more about it, because you might be wondering why you need a terminal multiplexer like T-Mux that has been around for ages. But, let's just say... I'm done with tiling window managers. That's for those hipsters out there. Tmux is really where it's at. So let's get on the desktop and get after it. All right, so pull up your terminal of choice like I have here, and we're just going to do a sudo apt install Tmux, or if you're on Arch or any other distro, all of them have Tmux. You just can't go wrong with Tmux. But not just stock Tmux, because Tmux kind of looks like this. And this looks all right, and you still have a lot of the functionality of Tmux, but not just, it's quite, it's missing something. So let's go ahead. I'm going to quit this out, and we're going to do a couple things. So the first thing we're going to do is clone Oh My Tmux. And this guy has made this fantastic configuration file for us, and has just basically wrapped up all the goodness from Tmux into a simple clone. You can see kind of like the self-contained, pretty, versatile, containerized configuration file. I have this on my laptop, and it is just a godsend. So with that, let's go ahead and install this. I've already installed Tmux itself. Uh, now we're just going to go ahead and clone Tmux and all of this. So we're just going to do this from right here. And I'm just going to copy this, come back into the terminal. I'm using Kitty for my terminal. Pretty awesome. It's GPU accelerated. For those that love alacrity... Kitty is really where it's at, but that's a video for another day. With that said, let's clone some Tmux, and then we're just going to link the comp file of that Tmux, and then we're going to also uh, copy the .local as well. .local is kind of where we're going to be making all the changes for this uh, before we launch into Tmux itself. So with that said, uh, let's go ahead and do a vim and make some initial changes. These initial changes are kind of what I like to do, but I also made a community post about what we're doing. The power of Tmux is it remembers everything about your terminal. So you're never gonna just close one and then go, oh crap, I gotta split the panes again and do all that other jazz. No, no, no. It just remembers the session, which is amazing. So let's go Tmux, and we're just gonna go into here. Uh, I'm going to just kind of skip most of this and kind of go towards the bottom of it as most of the configuration out of the gate is pretty darn good. But kind of the first bit is when you get to the TPM section. This is Tmux Plugin Manager is what TPM stands for. Uh, TPM stands for other stuff, but uh, when dealing with Tmux, that's what it stands for. And we're going to update plugins true. And then we're going to just change some of these enable plugins as well. I like to use copycat, CPU, resurrect. You know what? I just do them all. Continuum and resurrect. But there's also some custom stuff I like to do as well. And one other thing I like to do as well, Tmux conf copy to OS clipboard false. I like to actually just change this to true as well. And we'll save that out. And then if you're going to do the copy to clipboard, always remember to make sure you have xclip installed. So I'm just going to do that real fast. I'm pretty sure I do, but... We'll just type it to make sure. Oh, actually, I didn't have XClip, so that's why we do that. All right, with Tmux, XClip, and this configured, I think we can quit out. And I like to just kind of change the custom font. I'm using KDE here, so whatever you're using to launch into your terminal, you just need to come in and kind of change the custom shortcut. So I go into Actions, add Tmux, and attach onto this. Now, as far as the attach goes, that attaches to the last session. So when I quit out and I jump back in, it's just going to remember everything. So I'm going to apply this real fast, and then we're going to launch the terminal. You see it launches right into Tmux here. But we're going to do a vim, and we're going to go tmux.conf.local, and go all the way down now. I'm going to add one line at the very bottom, and we'll just hit O and launch this. This just kind of remember this session. So this is done. Uh, it still doesn't look all that great, which is okay. We're just going to go Tmux kill server. That kills all our Tmux instances, so when we launch it again, it should be able to update everything and kind of make it look pretty. So this is the actual base theme we have, and uh, it's going to find some stuff because we did enable some plugins, and now we can actually start uh, doing some fun things with this. Now, I'm just going to do like a NeoFetch just to demonstrate kind of what the base looks like. Now let's quit. 
launch back in and it remembers your entire session. So that's the that's the, my initial setup of Tmux. But a lot of tiling window manager guys, you, you know, I've already probably pissed them off and they're gone from this video, but what their big thing was in launching new panes. And what you can do is do the prefix, which is like a control A or a control B by default. So control A, and then you can split it that way, or you can split it horizontally with the, the same thing. And uh, doing it's a hyphen and then also an underscore is basically what controls this. But you can always just quit or exit that, exit this pane, and that's great. But you also have new windows. You see that one down there and it just kind of shows what's going on. We can actually do create a new window and this is just ZHH. So let's say we're doing like an H top. We could do that here. And then if we wanted to go to the previous window, we could do the prefix and then hit P to go to the next, uh, the previous. And that kind of flips back and forth. But if you have a lot of windows, like let's go ahead and create another one. We'll just do the prefix and C again. And for this one, let's just do like a C matrix. And oh, I don't even have C matrix. That's just a crime against humanity. So let's go ahead and install some C matrix. And we'll do asynchronous. All right, so now we have C matrix. Now we can do our prefix and say one to go to one, or I can say C matrix and go back there, hit three. You can control it all with the number keys. So control A and then one, control A, hit two, whatever it is and flip around each one of these or just exit and it'll just kill that one. But even better than that, there's the panes, the windows, but then there's also the session. So we're in our own session right here and I made it to where it auto launches back into that or attaches back into that session, which is fantastic. No matter where you're at, you can attach back to that session or create an entirely new session. And it, you, it is very, very powerful on servers and everything. That's why I, I've always used Tmux from back in the day, but I kind of got away from it until I really jumped back in and started learning some more of these new plugins. But let's say I wanted to copy something on the screen. I can actually do um, just the prefix and hit enter and then go into copy mode and say, you know what? I just want to grab all of this right here and just paste that into, let's say, Kate. So let's just pause that right there. And there it is right into my Kate. And I can just paste that over and over whatever I want. Uh, it's very, very powerful in that regard. So very easy to work with as well. Now there's way, way more things in Tmux and I don't wanna to go too much in depth here. I wanted to just kind of get your feet wet and then have you explore. The next GitHub I wanna show you is awesome-tmux because this guy really goes in depth. If you want, let's say on your terminal, let's launch back into our terminal. Let's say you want the weather down here or maybe you want a ticker of stocks, whatever you want, you can put here. On my laptop, obviously I have the battery because I wanna know, hey, how much battery life is left? All that's right in my Tmux terminal, which is fantastic. But you can customize this any which way you want, changing that .local file, kind of like we did with reattaching that session every time. Now, moving on past this, uh, obviously go to Awesome Tmux. You can see all the different things here. Status bar, there's extra status bars, things you can add in. I already mentioned weather, but online status, whether your VPN's enabled, all kinds of really cool stuff. And all these different plugins like Jump is probably pretty useful. Spotify, if you wanna control your music from the terminal, all kinds of just really neat things. So I'm gonna leave this as this is a fantastic repository. Rothgar made this on GitHub. So big shout out to him. Uh, and you can see it already has like almost 4,000 stars. So I'm a little late to the party on this one. Another big thing is the cheat sheet. I highly recommend coming in here, kind of sit, looking through this, learning, creating new sessions, attaching to them, which I made the default command Tmux A or Tmux attach. And then you can see all the different sessions and, and windows and panes. Now by default, this says percent sign and quotes for a vertical and horizontal. I really like the new bindings that the cheat sheet gave us or this Oh My Tmux gave us. I do like the hyphen and underscore a little bit better, but that some of these will differ a hair. So definitely check out the original one as those can differ a bit from the cheat sheets out there. And that's gonna do it for me in Tmux today. I'm dying here in Texas in the summertime. This studio is way too hot. I have to get a new AC unit or something because I think I will keel over from a heart 
heat stroke. I can't even talk anymore. With that, leave me a comment down below. Let me know what you think of Tmux. Do you even bother with tiling window managers anymore? <laughs> uh, but yeah, let me know. And with that, I'll see you in the next one.